So it is finally that time. Finally, I have beaten Paper Mario in the Thousand Year Door. And I know some of you have been like, it's not that long of a game. Okay, it is when you're also working on a Yuden Chronicles. And so both of those being relatively long RPG style games, it took a while, but we're here. And please, before we get into that, hit that like and subscribe button. It helps the channel grow and it costs you absolutely nothing. Anyway, uh, here are my thoughts on Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. So I thought it was a pretty good game. I didn't have many complaints. It was a decent story. Uh, graphics are all right. Um, but, uh, let me hear what your thoughts are. Anything and everything down in the comment section is much appreciated. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Can you imagine if that was my whole video? The video I've been talking about doing for, like, a few weeks now and then just 10 seconds, a little thing, and that's it. That'd be great. No, okay. But before we get into this, I want to just go over a few things. Number one, no or very little spoilers at all because, well, that's, like, one of the hugest parts of playing a game. So why would you watch a review... If you hadn't played the game and other thing is too is most of the video i'm actually going to use a trailer because of where i'm at in the game i can either basically get the last area or i can restart and do like a the beginning and either way probably more entertaining to watch a trailer but yeah i definitely wanted to emphasize the fact that i'm not going to be giving any spoilers out but i will say when people say that this is the greatest mario game ever made i don't disagree but I think it depends on what you think a Mario game is. See, some people prefer the 2D, old-school, traditional Mario, and then some people just take it as a game in itself. And as a game as a whole, yeah, I do think Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door is probably the best Mario I've ever played. It's the only game that has a story that has kept me engaged in the whole thing. The different story arcs are incredibly impressive. The writing is really solid. A lot of character development. A lot of characters that we'll never see again. But they've honestly built them up for you to actually care about these characters. Far more, at least, than I did in, like, the base, just simple characters. Like Toad. You know, nothing against Toad. I love Toad. But Toad is only cool because he's just been there for so long. I know nothing about Toad. Now, King K, for instance, I know a lot about that dude. And you never hear about him. You have no idea who I'm talking about, and that's fine. My point is, is they did so much work, background work, building these characters, this dialogue, which I wouldn't say is, like, over the top. Like, to be honest, it's not Shakespeare, but it's good. And it's really good, because it hits this line. This line I like to call the Spongebob slash Bluey line. It's where adults can enjoy it, and also children can enjoy it. And that, I think, is a very, very hard target to hit, but they did that. But it's not only the dialogue, the storytelling, which, again, has multiple story arcs, really goes deep into a lot of Mario lore, and ultimately is one of the most satisfying games to play from a story perspective. But also the combat? Yeah, it's pretty fun. And I think namely because it touches on two things. Number one, it's interactive. Number two, it's turn-based. You have enough time to strategize what attack you want to use, but it also keeps you engaged by requiring you to do certain things to make the attack stronger. For instance, with Mario, it can be hitting A at the right time or pulling back on the left stick and releasing at just the right time for a critical hit. And so that keeps you going, even if the turn-based mechanics get a little stale for a lot of people, but those actions keep you engaged. While being precise isn't the most difficult thing, being precise consistently does begin to uh, at least keep your attention, we'll put it that way. Although that's not the only part of the combat. In the infancy of the game, it's the biggest part, but as you continue to grow and collect characters, the other aspect is strategy. Knowing which partner to use, which one to switch in and out. That becomes a huge part of the game as well, and as your team grows, you start to see a lot of different tactics that you can use. And one of the main questions is, especially with it being a Nintendo game, okay, all of these things are possible, but do you, are they required? Do you need them? And honestly, yes, Nintendo gets a lot of crap for making easy games, which I've always hated that argument, because honestly, I think we know that Mario is more marketable for children than it is to adults. Like, could you imagine a Souls like Mario? That would not do well. But I will say that there is a line between just like super, super simple and giving a little bit of challenge. And I think that's where Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door really sit because there are some pretty easy fights and even early on, a lot of the bosses are relatively easy. But as the game continues on, 
it does get pretty challenging. I'm not going to say that there was ever any moments where I was just so frustrated I couldn't play it, but there was definitely some battles that I lost, which was the complete opposite of Mario RPG, which I made it through in two days without one death. Now, this though does offer more challenge. Again, it's nothing that's going to make you super frustrated or anything like that. I would just say like minor speed bumps, but I do think that it does find a nice niche of just not being super easy and you know really a lot of that kind of starts to pick up in the middle part of the game and that feels really organic and the game from there sort of has some peaks and valleys as far as difficulty goes but again nothing ever being too difficult or too easy honestly watching your health is something that i had to get used to with this game now as far as everything else is considered we went through the story went through the combat now controls is that a real big important thing yeah it kind of is only because of the combat the precision that you have to hit to hit criticals and let me just say for the most part yeah it's pretty much spot on I never really had any difficulty mastering anybody's critical hits but to add even more to the precision, you can actually add style to your attack. If you hit the button at the right time during the attack, your character will actually earn style points, what will get you more stars. You see, in the combat, you're being watched all the time by a crowd, and the more stars you get or admiration from the crowd, the more your special meter builds up. And this allows you to do special attacks, as there are a multitude of different attacks ranging from flower power skills like using your hammer in a certain way or a jump a certain way and every character has at least one of these flower power moves then there's also the special moves which requires you to have one of the crystal stars which is the main thing you're going for in this game i know i haven't mentioned it but you're essentially looking for seven crystal stars to open the thousand year door that's your motivation for going to each area and once you acquire these stars you can then use these special moves that are tethered to them now the whole crowd aspect it's not just about building up your special meter as it also kind of helps with your xp as well basically just appealing to the crowd also watching out for the crowd because sometimes they will throw junk at you which can hurt and help you it's all part of the combat so you see where I'm saying like, it doesn't get stale at all. In fact, it's pretty interactive throughout it, even though it is that horrible turn base that a lot of people don't like. Okay, okay, we get it. The combat is really good. The story is pretty good or arguably the best for any Mario game. But how's the performance? Well, I don't know. I'm not Digital Foundry. I don't have that software. But I'll tell you this. To me, it performed excellent. I never had any sort of issues, never had any sort of lag, or I never had any crazy frame rate drops or anything like that. I know a lot of people are not happy that it's locked in at 30. A lot of people wanted it to be 60. To me, I couldn't tell the difference. And I'm not the best representation for that, if I'm being honest. Because usually if a game just looks smooth and plays well, then I don't have any complaints. And I don't know if that's what I call switch rot, or if it's from playing so many different indie games and then playing like these third party games and seeing how much different they perform. But either way, I rarely have any complaints when it comes to this. And especially with this game and it being turn-based and a little bit slower paced, I might add, there was never any issues. I thought 30 performed just perfect and never, like I said, had any sort of issues. In fact, I've heard if you turn it up to 60, it's actually more difficult to hit some of those precision attacks, like the critical hits that I was talking about earlier. So, hey, maybe it's good that it's at 30. Now, the other aspect of this game that we have to talk about just for a little bit is the music. The music is excellent. It fits just perfectly for the environment or the situation that you're in. Nintendo composers are renowned for using the game like a canvas and instead of just completely painting over it, really accenting it. And that's exactly what this music does. At times it's whimsical, at other times it's exciting. The way though, it always just feels like the game. And that is exactly what it's supposed to do. I have to give big props to that as well. And I thought about this for a while. I think that this is the best Mario game I've ever played. Now, is it a game I'll go back to? Probably not. This is one of those games that one experience, maybe two later on for nostalgia. That's about all you need. I'm going to go back more frequently to the platformers and the more traditional Mario games. But as a whole, if I'm rating everything, this is the best Mario game I've ever played. And if it came out this year, this would definitely be runner up for game of the year, if not just game of the year right out the bat. So for me, I have to give this game 
a 9.5 out of 10. This is a great pickup. I'm glad they remastered it. I'm glad people like me who never got to play the first iteration of it is able to play it now on the Switch. But let me know what your thoughts are. Have you played this game? Have you played the original? Are you going to get the new one? Anything and everything down in the comment section below. Much appreciated. I love each and every one of you guys. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.